Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the World of Juice Hoops channel, and welcome back to an episode of the San Antonio Spurs Rebuild here on NBA 2K24. That is right. Last episode, we had the playoffs. Unfortunately, as you can see, if you didn't watch last episode, we fell to the Houston Rockets in seven games of the Western Conference Finals. Then the Rockets went on and won the championship. Very, very quite frustrating, but it happens, man. We're in year number two of the series. We're a year ahead of schedule, I would think. Next year, year number three, I think, is going to be our year to actually make it to the finals and maybe even win it. So we'll see what happens there. But we got an offseason to take care of. I'm super excited about it. I hope you guys are too. Hit that like button, subscribe channel, join the Juice Club. Let's get it started. We got a lot of things that we got to take care of in this offseason, but let's first advance to the actual offseason. So player retirements, LeBron James. I don't remember if I override your thing. Did I override you? No, you're coming back. I didn't. So LeBron James is not done just yet. Al Horford can retire. Eric Gordon can retire. Kevin Love can retire. Derrick Rose can retire. All these guys just need to sit down. LeBron can stay, though, because <laughs> it's LeBron. All right, so those are all the retirements. Staff retirements. Frank Vogel done after 19 years, and he was coaching the Suns at the end. And then a couple of uh, assistant coaches get retired. Hall of Fame inductees. Nobody in the Hall of Fame. LeBron would have been the only one. Jersey retirements. No jersey retirements. League meetings. We will make sure everything's rejected, and it looks like it is. And then the draft lottery. I don't think we're going to be in this, obviously, because we had a, a top pick, or we had a top uh, playoff run, but we don't have anything else, so let's skip the lottery. Who's got the number one pick? It is the Dallas Mavericks, so they might be getting their new big man to pair alongside Luka. We pick it, pick number 29 on the year. I think that's our only draft pick. It is, so... Our only draft pick is pick number 29 of the NBA draft. Am I happy with that? No, not necessarily. We don't even have a first round pick for 2026 because I'm pretty sure I traded that in the Jaron Jackson Jr. trade. There are some questions that I have concerning Jaron Jackson Jr. If we go to the scouting, some players that I like, we've talked about J.P. Kemp. We've talked about Amari Rose, and we've talked about O'Shea Raymond. Those are kind of three guys that I have my eye on. Now, we're probably not going to be able to get any of those guys if we don't move into the top half of the draft. There's not really a power forward in this class that I like. Obviously, Mac Yang is pretty crazy good. He's 7'5". He's got Shaq's Hall of Fame ceiling. But remember, we took Julio Cruz last year because he has Shaq Hall of Fame ceiling, but he also had a three ball. Mac Yang is basically just a big man. He can rebound, he can play defensively in the post, and he can that's that's basically he can't go out on the perimeter, he can't play make, he can't shoot, he can't do anything basically. So this man is kind of a bust, I would think. And then you got JP Kemp out here, who is very athletic. His Hall of Fame is or his ceiling is Hall of Fame John Havlicek. He's got the A- potential. I really like J.P. Kemp. I think he could be a very, very underrated good player. Amari Rose, we talked about. He's got some really good playmaking, uh, but his potential is a B, and his, his uh, ceiling is Norm Nixon's starter. So Amari Rose, the more, I look lo more lo the more I look at it, might not be our guy. And then our final one that we were looking at was O'Shea Raymond. He's got a torch. He can go inside as well. He can rebound a little bit. He's got potential, he's got athleticism, and his ceiling is all NBA uh, Vince Carter. So I kind of like either J.P. Kemp or, or O'Shea Raymond. I don't know how we get into a position to get those either one of those guys unless we trade Jaron Jackson Jr., which is kind of what I'm thinking. So right now, I think the consensus... Ooh, it's not consensus. I was going to say the consensus number one pick is Wilson Wright, but no, it's Mac Yang. So it looks like... Nobody really knows who's going to go number one overall. They kind of have J.P. Kemp jumping in there as well. Very interesting. Nobody really knows who's going to go where. I, I think that J.P. Kemp is is our guy. I really do. I know he's not kind. Of, he's not like super athletic. But if we find him here, 
He's not the the most athletic. Yeah, he's got F athleticism, which is really confusing to me. Like, I don't know why. He's got all these other great things that he can do. He can shoot the three ball. He can go inside. He can do all kinds of stuff. He can perimeter defend. He's a really good perimeter defender. He can rebound a little bit. He's got great basketball IQ. He's got great potential. But then his athleticism is an F. He's a very interesting player. I'm not really sure what we're going to do with him, if anything. So we're going to not fire anybody. We're going to keep, obviously, Greg Popovich as our head coach. Uh, Pre-draft workouts. Let's get to the NBA draft first. Let's get to the NBA draft and figure out if we need to make a trade or not. Is Jaron the guy? He's got one year left on his deal. We've got the expired contract of Wembenyama, but we will re-sign him because we have him on bird rights and stuff, and he's restricted. Uh, we have expired deal of Jeremy Sohan, but he should be restricted as well. Trey Jones, I don't think, is going to be restricted. I think he's just a straight-up free agent. We're probably not going to bring back... Cancar or Austin Rivers. We'll let those guys walk, I would assume. Jaron's really the only guy and Devin Vassell, but we saw how good Devin Vassell's end of his season was. So maybe we keep Devin and we trade Keldon because Keldon is kind of slacking a little bit. He wasn't, he was doing okay, but he wasn't performing like Devin Vassell was. So maybe we trade Jaron's contract, uh, Jaron's contract along with Keldon. Nobody wants either of them. Okay, that's not good. What what do the Sixers want for the... Or what do the, the Bulls want for the third pick? No offers found? Well, this isn't good. I can't believe nobody wants Jaron on a one-year deal. He's got three-and-a-half star value. Keldon has three-star value. Vassell's got three-and-a-half star value. How do we get away with trading these guys? Maybe we don't even trade for a draft pick. Maybe we trade for a player that can help us this season. That's that's a big question. Or maybe we trade these two big contracts for a cheaper contract, a couple cheap contracts. That could be something. Maybe we trade for a contract uh, like Bam out of buy, although it's not, not very cheap. Uh, we could go for... I don't even know who we... Who's a cheap contract that I, I could go for here? I'm not even sure. We might have to wait till the draft is over with. We might have to wait till the, the draft is over with to figure out if we make a trade or not. Because right now, a lot of guys are restricted and expired and all kinds of stuff like that. So I, I want to get a feel for who's going to be in free agency. So let's let's go through the draft. I'm probably not going to make a trade up. I'm probably not going to make a trade up right now. We are going to be negative 14 million right now, but we're going to be positive 105 next season. <laughs> but we also are thinking about moving on Jaron's contract and Keldon's contract, and we're not going to probably re-sign Trey Jones. So like we're going to be freeing up a lot of money here in the near future. Let's go to the draft. I'm not going to make a trade. We're going to stick at 29 and see who's available. Number one pick in the draft is J.P. Kemp. Wow. He was projected to go no higher than three, I think. I don't think he was ever projected to go number one in the mock drafts. But he goes number one overall to the Mavericks. So Luke has got himself a running mate. It is the unathletic J.P. Kemp. Number two is O'Shea Raymond. What is happening here? All the guys that I wanted who were projected to go later in the, the first round, not later, but like in the 6 to 10 range, are all going top 5. Okay. The Bulls are on the clock now, and they trade along with Julian Phillips for LaMelo Ball. What? <laughs> what? The Chicago Bulls have decided that they're not going to find a player to fix their organization that's much better than LaMelo Ball in this year's draft. So they trade the third overall pick along with Julian Phillips to grab LaMelo Ball from the Hornets. What a trade. And now the Hornets will take Mac Yang. The almost consensus number one overall pick goes three to the Hornets. Insane. Burt Walker goes four to the Warriors. The Thunder are up now. They take Jamal Jackson, 7-2 center from Massachusetts Lowell. 
they don't need another center. They already got Chet, uh, Chet Holmgren. Norm Goodwin goes to the Magic to pair alongside Cole Anthony and Paolo and Franz Wagner. The Kings will take Edmund Ramsey, Ramsey from Creighton. The Thunder again take Boss Cook out of Flowrider. Then you got Francis Hawkins, LSU small forward, going to the Grizzlies. You've got Dwayne Jones headed to the Rockets, the defending champs from Moorhead State. Love Moorhead State. AC Strawberry heads to the Magic from Richmond, the point guard. And the Rockets also bolster their team with a small forward, Lou Blair from Notre Dame. The Utah Jazz take Ethan Beasley out of Indiana State. Then you've got yourself a trade. The Grizzlies are trading the Hornets' 14th pick for Carl Anthony Towns from the Warriors. This is the craziest draft of all time. The Golden State Warriors will then take Jackie Neal, another point guard. They took a point guard earlier in the draft, but they take another one. And Amari Rose will head to Oklahoma City, so we will be seeing him a lot. That's kind of upsetting. The Toronto Raptors take Wilson Wright, who was going back and forth with Mac Yang to be the number one overall pick. He falls to 16. Interesting. The Celtics will take Brooke Blunt from Illinois. The Pelicans take Eric Lyles from Connecticut from UConn. The Pistons grab Cam Collins, St. Joseph, 7-foot power forward. Edgar Kelly heads to Utah. The Pacers take Antoine Richardson from Texas Christian, TCU. Then you've got Desmond Quinn from UC San Diego going to Boston. The Knicks are up at 23. They grab Anton An Antonis Baldus. Balidis from Greece. <laughs> Whatever. Yolf Larsen from Sweden goes to the Pelicans. Some tricky names. AJ Landry heads to the Bulls, who already just got LaMelo Ball. Dusty Tinsley goes to the Clippers. We've got Ted White the third heading to Brooklyn. We're almost up here. Utah Jazz will trade their pick, 28th overall pick, to the Kings. For Jacob McGee. Okay. And now we are on the clock. So I don't know who's available here. I have absolutely no idea. We probably are going to need to get a power forward. But the power forward class is just not very strong. I mean, look at some of these guys. These guys just don't look that good. So I think we just probably should take best player available. Who that best player available is, I don't know. It's not this guy. Jay Miles. Got a little inside scoring. A little three-point scoring. DeMarcus Cousins All-Star uh, All is not bad. Frankie Weber. Ooh, Frankie Weber can do a little bit of everything. He's got B potential. He's got Jamal Murray All-Star ceiling. But he's tiny. He's 5'9", 23 years old. I don't really like that. Oscar Wolf, small forward. He's got B potential. Glenn Rice, starter. Eric Sparks. Kenny Anderson. Norm Robertson. Is Tyler Hero. He's got a torch, though. A-plus three-pointer. Makes sense. J.C. Craig, Joe Dumars, Daniel Bryan, the GOAT. He doesn't look that good, though. Purvis Shorts, Ryan Berry is Vernon Maxwell. I think it might be that 5'9 guy is our best option here because none of these other ones look that good. Cameron Shaw, Glenn Rice, DeAndre Ayton for this dude. Makes sense. <laughs> uh, Art Hardaway, Don Buss. Brooke Walker, Steve Kerr, but he's got B three-point shooter. How are you, Steve Kerr? Oh, but he's got A-plus or A-minus potential. Brooke Walker could be our guy. We've got him 95% scout, so we know that he's pretty much that the way that he is. Who's this Frankie Weber guy? Is he better? He's 23, B potential, athleticism. I think Brooke Walker is going to be our guy here. Although... He'd probably be there in the second round. I mean, we pick it, pick number eight of the second round, so he'd probably be there. Let me take both of them. Frankie Weber and Brooke Walker look the best out of the rest of the guys available. So we'll grab Brooke Walker first. Or not, no, we'll grab Frankie Weber first. And then we pick pretty early into the second round. So we'll have to... There goes Daniel Bryan, Norm Robertson, Oscar Wolf, Wayne Dennis, Brian Hamilton, Esteban Sanchez, JC Craig. And now we can grab ourselves Brooke Walker and be happy with this draft. So I got to go to this sort by here. There we go. All right, where's Brooke Walker at? There he is. Brooke Walker, welcome to the squad from Illinois point guard. So two point guards in this draft. 
not necessarily what I wanted to do, but considering where we were drafting it, it seemed the only option. So, wow, we got 83 overall JP Kemp, 84 Raymond, 84 Mac Yang, 81 Brett Walker, Jamal Jackson's 84, 82, a couple 80s, Dwayne Jones, 83. Where's, uh, there's Amari Rose. He's an 80. Wright was only a 77. What are our guys? Weber's a 73. And then what is Walker? Walker is a 69. Nice. So it's a good thing I didn't take him in the first round. But I will sign both of them. Team player options. We will accept all the options. And I'll even accept the option on City Sissoko. So everybody comes back. Tatum declined. Butler declined. Donovan Mitchell declined. Kyrie declined. Jason Tatum. Wow. Bringing Tatum to San Francisco, uh, San Francisco to San Antonio would be the craziest thing of all time. Right now, we can't offer him any any contract. LeBron at least got some some offers this time. Who's he gonna go? He's gonna go back to uh, the Raptors. No, he's gonna go to the Dallas Mavericks to team up with Luca and their pick JP Kemp. All right, twenty eight years old. Donovan Mitchell looks decent. I, I kind of want Jason Tatum. I kind of want Jason Tatum. But I don't know how we get Jason Tatum without trading away a lot of pieces. Including these two guys right here. If we trade away Jaron Jackson Jr., we can get some decent players. But we can't trade these guys for actual players. We have to trade these guys for draft picks. Because we got to free up the money, obviously. So Tatum is asking for 56 million dollars we have to free up 35 million which isn't difficult i mean it really is just down to freeing up the money from jaron and not contract extensions it really is just freeing up the money from jaron and Keldon, really if you think about it so if we get rid of jaron's 23 million and then Keldon's 17 that pretty much puts us in prime position to grab jason tatum Okay, let's uh, let's talk trades with Jaron. Jaron Jackson Jr. He's going to have to get traded for a pick. It's going to have to be a draft pick. Hopefully it's for a team that was bad this year, like the Bulls. The Bulls were bad. I need to see this Bulls roster, though. The Bulls now have both the Ball brothers. They have Devonta Sabonis. They have Kobe White. So they have no wing players. Their best wing player is A.J. Landry. Who they just got this year, I think, right? Yeah, round twenty or round one, pick twenty-five. So they have no wing players at all. They have no power forwards. This is a weirdly constructed Bulls team. They could use Jaron Jackson Jr. So if we go to the Chicago Bulls, we ask for their. Oh, they don't have a twenty twenty-six pick. Well, I need a twenty twenty-six pick because I don't have one either. So we need to find the team that has Jaron Jackson or that has the Bulls pick. Who has the Chicago Bulls first round pick? The Grizzlies have. Oh, they got it in the... Wait, no. When they get that pick? I don't know, but they have that pick. Do we send Jaron back to... No, they have Carlton Towns. They don't need Jaron anymore. Although we can move Towns to center for them. Although they got P Pognati. They don't really need a center anymore. So the we just kind of have to get rid of the Bulls pick. But the Bulls do need a power forward. So do the, the 76ers. They could really use a power forward. The Cavs could really use a power forward. They have a 2026 first round pick. Uh, it was involved in a previous trade, so we can't trade for that. Who else needs a power forward? The Warriors need one desperately. They need a shooting guard, too. <laughs> They've lost everything, basically. Uh, the Timberwolves could use one, but I don't want to trade the Timberwolves. The Raptors could use one because Pascal's injured. Uh, Pistons can certainly use a power forward. And they don't have Kate Cunningham anymore. Or at least they haven't re-signed him yet. So maybe the Pistons are the team. So if we go over here, we ask for their 2026 first round pick unprotected. And then we ask for their 2027 first round pick unprotected. And then we ask for their 2028 first round pick unprotected. If I could actually click the right thing. And then we do this trade. It's a valid trade accept and they agreed so we get three years of first round picks 
from the Detroit Pistons for Jaron Jackson Jr. Maybe I could have got a little bit more, but that frees up 20 million. And then Keldon's going to be the next up to get to get got. Future draft picks. We now have a first round pick from the Pistons this year. We also have two first round picks next year, thanks to the Pistons and the Hawks. All right, we're looking pretty good now. But I wonder if I can get a, a first round pick for Keldon. Let me just throw Keldon in the trade finder, see what we can get by himself. So we can get... We can get some interesting stuff, but nothing nothing too crazy. I might as well just build the trade on my own. So Keldon in the trade finder. Who needs a small forward? These guys, I talked about the Bulls needing a small forward, but they don't have any draft picks that I want. Uh, the Grizzlies need a small forward. Because they have the young... Actually, they have Francis Hawkins. They, they can d develop him, I guess. Who else needs a small forward? Uh, the Magic need a small forward badly. They've got Ryan Atlow, but who knows if he's going to turn into anything. And the Magic could be on the brink of becoming a really, really good team. Do they have any draft picks? They have a swap best with the Suns. I don't really want that. I don't want to. I don't. I'd rather have just like unprotected stuff. <laughs> I don't. I don't want anything that I have to swap with anybody. So, who needs a draft pick, or who needs a small forward? The Suns need a small forward badly. They got Brian Cameron, but who knows if he's going to be anything? So, do the Suns have draft picks? They don't. Oh, that's right. They're the other team that has the. Of course, they are. Uh, not the Rockets. The Raptors need a small forward. They've got Hami Diallo, but he's not that good. So if we could add an unprotected Raptors first round pick for the next three seasons, I would be perfectly fine with that. And if you could throw me Grady Dick, that'd also be pretty cool. We like what we have as far as the trade is concerned. I can also give you, if you don't want to just give me a uh, Grady Dick right away, I can also give you somebody. Uh, I've got a lot of guards. I can give you Bill Bradley. They like what they have as a trade is concerned. Uh, I can give you a second round pick. Another second round pick. Another second round pick. <laughs> and another second round pick. Okay, so they didn't accept that because they like what they have as far as a trade is concerned, which I don't really know what that means. So Grady's going to have to get got. We'll take away some of these second round picks. And Bill Bradley. Will this go through? They have a counter offer. They want two seconds and they'll give me an extra first in 2029. Okay. Uh, boom. Four first round picks for Keldon Johnson. I'll take that any day of the week. Future draft pick capital. 2027 is going to be loaded. We have three first round picks from the Pistons, Hawks, and the Raptors. And in 2028, we got two from the Pistons and Raptors. Thank you very much. And I even got another one from the 2029 that I wasn't even expecting. So we're looking pretty good now. We have to hope next season the Pistons and Raptors are bad. But with those moves being made, that will now free up $38 million. I don't think that's going to be good enough to get Kel uh, get Jason Tatum. Oh, I can offer Jason Tatum a contract. Oh, baby. <laughs> I can offer Jason Tatum a contract. It's not smart to offer Jason Tatum a contract, though. I know I traded away those guys, in theory, to get Jason Tatum. But we need a better power forward. And Jason Tatum would be that better power forward. But we also need depth. We don't have a lot of depth. We've got our starting rotation, which is fantastic. But after that, we would have Will Freeman, Jeremy Sohan, City Sissoko, Bill Bradley, and then a bunch of point guards. So... I don't really know if that's going to be good enough depth. <laughs> but it's Jason Tatum. I kind of want him. I kind of want him. I mean, I, I got to give him a contract offer. I got to give him a contract offer. It's Jason Tatum. So we've offered him a deal. We are not in the running because the Heat are giving him a no trade clause. And they're giving him a max contract. Well, that's kind of upsetting. So it looks like we're not going to get Jason Tatum anyway. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> so let's look at other people around the 
the free agency. So you got unrestricted Kyrie Irving. You got unrestricted Donovan Mitchell. You've got restricted Jalen Green. We can try to s snag him from the, the rivals and then start him over Devin Vassell. I, always, I do think that Devin Vassell would probably be a better backup anyway. Franz Wagner's restricted. Middleton's unrestricted. Some of these guys are a little bit too expensive. Power forward. We do need a power forward if we're going to not get Jason Tatum, so we need to think about this. Julius Randle's 30. Evan Mobley's cool. Johnson. There's not really anybody that I absolutely want other than Tatum, unfortunately. Sengun's restricted. All the centers are not that good. It's really a top-heavy free agent class. I could talk to Jace, uh, Julius Randle about a, a trade or a, a signing. I would, I'd be willing to offer J Julius Randle a contract because I do need a power forward. And we need a shooting guard, too. We really do need a shooting guard. We're in the, un uh, we're in the affordable. We don't need to be in the affordable. We don't need affordable contracts. I kind of want to offer Jalen Green a contract. Those are my three offers for moratorium period. What's going to happen? We've got Julius Randle or Jalen Green, but if we accept the Jalen Green contract, then we can't get Julius Randle. We can't get both of them, unfortunately. And the problem is, I wonder if we go for Jalen Green, they would even restrict the deal. So what about if I switch this? Are they going to are they going to match the contract? He, ah, uh, Jason Tatum signed with the Miami Heat as well. Of course, he matched the contract. Darn you. I thought they were going to, but I had to throw the offer out there. Or I had to, I had to test it. Test the waters. So we didn't get Jalen Green. Tatum signs with the, the Heat, which is kind of crazy. Who do I want, though? Can we get Jalen Suggs? I know he's restricted. Randall, is there a, a big-time power forward that's not restricted that I could go for? Caleb Martin, Miles Bridges, John Collins got an A plus three. Since when? Since when does John Collins have an A plus three? So we're back here, and it obviously can't sign multiple different people. Ugh. I'm not going to accept the... Julius Randle contract. That's way more than I was paying him originally. I didn't want to... I I did the wrong offer there. Orlando's decided to match the offer on Jalen Suggs anyway, so... Julius Randle, we need to give him the team option. That's what I wanted to give him originally. But what else can we even do? We can only get one guy, apparently. It looks like it's going to be Julius Randle. And is Julius Randle even better than what we have at Jeremy Sohan? I don't know. He's an 86, so he's obviously high overall, but I do need to come away with a shooting guard. Another shooting guard to pair alongside my boy, uh... My boy, what's-his-face? Let's offer Jordan Hawkins a deal. And looks like we can get both of them. Three years for Randall, one year for Jordan Hawkins with a couple player options, I think, in there. So we signed both of those guys. We make it to regular free agency. Right now, our starting rotation is Vega, Devin Vassell, Victor, Randall, and Julio Cruz. Okay. Not as good as last season, obviously, but we got the draft picks is what we were looking for. Well, we were looking for Jason Tatum, but I think I've managed to work this around into a decent team. I need a better small forward than City Sissoko. But I have $12 million in cap room. So we need to find a small forward who's not going to be super expensive. Franz Wagner's too expensive. I had to just I had to find out. I had to, I had to offer. Scotty Barnes is also too expensive. Can I get LeBron? Can I please just get LeBron James? I'll give him a no trade clause. Oops. Negotiate. Two year deal. No trade clause. Player option. He's insulted by the... Dude, you're 40 years old. <laughs> I just wanted you. 
Why do you gotta be so stubborn, dog? Alright, well, we gotta find a small forward to replace City Sissoko, so... Who's he gonna be? Is it gonna be... Trey Murphy? Is it gonna be Isaac Okoro? Not Bogdan. Or Bojan. Uh, Kelly Oubre? Very attractive. Josh Kogi, Torian Prince, Derek Jones Jr., Corey Kispert, Moses. Moses Moody's interesting. Duncan's not expensive, but it's Duncan Robinson. I kind of like the Isaac Okoro deal, but he's kind of expensive. I wish he wasn't so expensive. Because Isaac Okoro is probably our best option, if you think about it. With the guys that we could potentially afford, but we can't afford him. So maybe we go for a shooting guard that can play small forward? Is there a shooting guard that's cheap? Bruce Brown is intriguing. Isaiah Joe. Lonnie Walker. Hmm. I don't really know if there's anybody here. I mean, we could go for Bruce Brown and then grab him. I want Josh Giddy. <laughs> uh, I want all these guys, but I can't afford any of them. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we just sit, stick with City Sissoko and, and be happy. Save our money for something else. Because there's just nobody else here that I, I that I want. RJ Hampton is... I remember RJ Hampton coming out of college. Where did he go to college? He didn't go to college. That's right. I, remember, I just remember seeing highlight tapes of him. RJ Hampton. Two-year deal. That's expensive. One-year deal. Uh, I'd rather just keep the money. I'd rather just keep the money. So where's everybody going to go? Signed. Cade Cunningham goes back to Detroit. Jalen Brunson's headed to Charlotte to replace LaMelo Ball. Jalen Green goes back to the Rockets. We obviously got Julius Randle. Suggs goes back to uh, Orlando. Miles Turner's back in Indiana. Nas is back in Minnesota. Dennis Schroeder goes to Toronto. Ke Kevon Looney goes to the Houston Rockets. Great. Trey Lyles, Precious. Where'd some of the big names go? They must not have signed yet. Chris Paul's still there. Yeah, LeBron's still here. Kyrie's still here. Are they ever going to get an offer? D'Angelo Russell's available, but he's way too expensive. Chris Paul's asking for way too much. Why are you asking for that much, Chris? I'm not going to offer you a deal. Let's see where those guys go. Did they sign yet? Nobody has signed yet. These guys are taking a long time to sign deals. Remember, LeBron didn't sign until the very last day, and he signed with the Raptors on a one-year contract. I wanted LeBron, but he's asking for far too much money. Far too much money. Any big names? There's Jason Tatum. Jimmy Butler leaves the Heat, goes to the Warriors. Devon Donovan Mitchell goes to the Kings. Evan Mobley's back with the Cavs. Jamal Murray's back with the Nuggets. That's kind of crazy. Okay. Are these guys not going to just... They're not going to sign anywhere? I guess not. <laughs> Player progression. Wembenyama's up to a 93. Cruz is up to an 89. Vassell's up to an 84. Vega's up to an 84. Sohan's an 81. Jordan Hawkins. Maybe Jordan Hawkins can be something. Who knows? Malachi... Oh, Malachi actually went up to a 78. That's what I want to see. His three-point shot got better as well. Okay. We're a very young team again. <laughs> our oldest player is Julius Randle, but then other than that, our oldest player isn't older than 24. That's kind of crazy. Uh, player progression, summer league, all kinds of stuff. And then we get to the next season. So we, uh, we trade away Jaron Jackson Jr. and Keldon Johnson. Maybe we got worse. Maybe we didn't. I don't know. But we do prioritize draft picks. We have two draft picks this year that don't rely on us having to be good. Then we have three draft picks in 2027, none of which require us to be good. Then we have two more draft picks in 2028, and then we have two draft picks in 2029. So we are looking pretty good with draft capital. It's just a matter of how good we're actually going to be on the court. Vega, Vassell... Wenbenyama, Randall, and Cruz. The bench is kind of weak. I will admit that. The bench is kind of weak, but 
I think the starters are good enough to get us to the playoffs again. Maybe not the one seed, but we certainly are good enough to get to the playoffs again. And we need to load in another draft class. So user created draft class. Let's find a good one here. Let's find a good one. So let me just type in fictional. Fick. Fick? Shun. Bull. All right, there we go. Okay, what do we got here? We got Tokyo Riot Handmade Fictional. Okay. We got CC Fictional Year 1, CC Fictional Year 2. Okay, we can start with the top here. This one says Elite Fictional Year 1. We'll take a look at that one as well. But this one has 3,000 downloads. What do we got here, Tokyo Riot? We've got... Best player in the class is Stevie Outlaw. This looks like garbage. Sorry about your luck, big boy, but you are not going to be our... Our draft class. I kind of want... We should go for that one that has like 13,000, shouldn't we? Fiction... Bull. Let's go for this one. Elite Fictional Year One from T-Sun 1987. What's he got for me? Oh, this is the one we just drafted. <laughs> this is the one we just used. So I already used T-Sun's draft class. That's good to know. No wonder I used it. Fictional... Again, third time's the charm, baby. Third time's the charm. He's got a year five draft as well. Maybe we should just look up his. Here's his year two. Let's just see what he's got here. He's got... Ooh, a lot of guys at the top here. J.R. Colangelo, Jonathan Torres, Alan Yang. We well, just got Mac Yang. Is that Alan Yang? He's a 7-7? Seven, seven? Okay, maybe we need to stay away from this guy. <laughs> Let's load in a new draft class. This guy's getting a little out of hand with his with his heights. Fictional. Four times the charm. Fourth times the charm. Let's try CC Fictional Year One. Chrome Claymore. What do you got for me? What do you got for me, big dog? You got Richard Hardaway, Troy Lambert, Cliff Ryan. These guys look interesting. But you only got one guy that's a B minus potential. Ugh. Kind of a bust of a draft, if you ask me, big dog. Looks like we're just going to have to keep on moving. Fiction now. We got King Nana. We got Duflaco. <laughs> Short fictional version one. We got... Well, you know what? Let's give King Nana a chance. He's got fictional draft one. What do you got, King Nana? He's also updated his one time. So, what do you got for me? You got Eli Harris, Frederick Staples. Okay, a few B potential players in here. Maybe this could be a good one. 6'8 for him. Max Hickson. Hick? Chuck Bark, Mateo Gabriel, Cody Moreland, Anthony Barker. This could be fine. James Michael Wright, the fourth. This one doesn't look too bad. I think we might rock with this one for year number three. Prince Nana looks like he's got it done. We can't see any, yeah, we can't see any comparisons just yet, but, I mean, Eli Harris looks like the consensus number one overall pick. My God. He looks kind of crazy. It's a good thing we got two draft picks this year. Frederick Staples looks crazy. Max Hickson looks good. Chuck Bark. Yeah, I think we'll stick with this one. I think we'll stick with this one. So that's going to be the draft class for next season. We obviously have, now with those trades to... Uh, Jaron and, and Keldon. We now sit with a decent amount of money. $10 million in available money, but we could, that could easily be freed up if we trade away Julius in the offseason next next year. 79, 80. Like we got a ton of money coming up. Upcoming free agencies, or uh, upcoming free agents, is going to be Joel Embiid, Luca. Oh, yeah, this is the year to have money. This is the year to have money. Joel and Luca, both available. We will re-sign Julio Cruz. Don't worry about that. This is the year you're going to want to have money. So, trading Julius Randle will certainly free up a big-time max contract, but we will re-sign Victor and Julio Cruz. Don't worry about that. But that's going to do it for the episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.